Good morning, Tom Murphy. Good morning. Tom, people would know you as a well-established businessman in Waterford City and County, one of the main business spokespersons over the years, somebody who has contributed to charities, continue to do an awful lot of good work regarding um, out and about uh, cleanups and supporting the hurling teams and supporting all sorts of uh, different initiatives. Elaine, you can sit down there, whatever suits you, that's perfect. Elaine from Crystal Valley Tech. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Delighted to be here. And this matter arises, Tom, because you sent a letter last week, a very specific letter uh, to me and a number of other people. Explain what was in that and why you sent that. (coughs) I sent a letter last week to you because I was at a meeting in town with a friend of mine and we were to do, it's to do with a charity that I'm involved in. And uh, afterwards we had a meeting with one of the councillors. It had to do with the the proposed, or I want to say proposed, but the, the talk, the possibility or the the, the uh, likelihood or not of the Waterford Garda headquarters being moved out of Waterford. And I started to list out the various things that had happened over the years and the various things that Waterford lost. And I was driving back to work and it reminded me of an article that was written about 45, 50 years ago by the late John Healy, who was a devoted West of Ireland man. He was, he was uh, when I asked you earlier, I think he was with the Irish Press and then he was with the Irish Times. But he, he is beloved West of Ireland. He wrote, nobody shouted, stop. And after our conversation at that meeting the other day, I was just thinking about all of the things that have lost, been lost to Waterford in, in, in recent years. And I just started to think, nobody shouted, stop. And the decisions that were made about those uh, uh, organisations, mostly state organisations, like I'll give you an example of a few. Like the ambulance dispatch was moved to Wexford. The IDA regional office was moved to Cork. The Waterford City and Council VEC was moved to Wexford. uh, Done a stroke of a pen by Brendan Howland. The ESB regional office was moved, moved to Cork. The Irish Water headquarters was set up in Kilkenny. Now we're talks about the Garda station, where there's somewhere in north of 450 jobs. Now, I know that won't impact on the number of jobs, but the water headquarters of the Garda... What about the, the hospital? I'll come, I'll come to that in a moment. I will come to that in a moment. Like people would say the hospital, there's loads of money going into the hospital. What figures do you have well, for us? I have figures that are shocking. And th- these are not... Uh, kind of bull figures. These are from Freedom of Information. At an announcement in the last few days, the, 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 I'm sorry, the hospitals in Cork have been granted 2 billion. The Waterford hospitals have been granted 30 million. And now if you want to talk about the WIT, in the last, over the last four or five years, the six universities in Ireland have been getting funding at the rate of a million a week each. A million a week each. This is for uh, developing further facilities in their, in their campuses. Waterford Regional, or WIT, has received nothing, not a shilling. Now, what we have here is a very, very interesting way of analysing a situation, Elaine and Tom. Tom Murphy is a car salesman. You are an established businessman. You've really, really good business there. You've lots of family working with you. You've got grandchildren growing up. You look at your grandson going into Water Park into second year and you think, where is he going to get a job well, at Waterford? I said to you, Damien, earlier, uh, I was looked at my eldest grandson that I loved dearly the other day and I saw him going off to the first day in second, in second year. And it just reminded me, my second son, Richard, there was 10 or 12 of his buddies used to knock around together. Now, Richard is 41. There's not one, there is not one of his friends. He is the only one from his group in Waterford. He's the only one. All the rest are in Dublin or London or America or wherever. Now, we thought long and hard about having this item, OK? Because we are part of Waterford and we want to develop Waterford and we want to see Waterford thrive and, and build. We've had Elaine in recently talking about it. She just handed me a a document there, a brochure saying the tech companies of Crystal Valley 2019 edition. And this idea of the message that is put out there, like Tom would be very, very careful over the years, Elaine, of giving the right message because business sentiment is important. So you don't want to be talking down a place. And it's this idea of when is the right time to say stop. Now. And Tom Murphy is saying it's 
the right time to get out there and shout and say, we need more. Now, you are part of a group that have developed a bottom-up approach to development and that you have jobs coming in stream and there's jobs there. Do you agree or disagree with Tom's analysis? It's very hard as a Waterford person to disagree with anything he says. I totally agree. But Damien, if you were selling your house in the morning, you wouldn't bring people in and show you the cracks, the holes and all the da- the damage that's been done. And similarly in business, what I try to do in Crystal Valley Tech is I absolutely agree with the figures, but I like to put forward the positive side and really dwell on all of the incredible things. And as long as Tom's list is of things that have gone wrong, which I agree with, there's also an equivalent list of the positives, the growth in pharma, tech, their engineering clusters, the Crystal Valley Tech, and I could talk as long as Tom about all of those. So I just think it's really important on the airwaves and in the media, in a world of a digital footprint and of all of the social media, that as well as the negatives, we get the positives out there and we get people very aware of them. And Tom is aware of that and we've had this discussion Uh, before, uh, Tom. But I'm trying to say, stop. I'm trying to say, stop. Let's, what's gone, it's gone. We can't get it back. But let, let there be no more. There is nobody more passionate about Waterford than me. Totally. I I'm 50 years agree. working in this city. I'm 40 years running my own business. I employ 50 people. And I worry, I look, at, for me at this stage, my sons are running the business. For me, I'm thinking of the community. I'm thinking of, it's heartbreaking. You drive down the quay next Sunday evening and you will see it, or when the colleges go back, and you will see our brightest and best getting on buses. And then three or four weeks after that, there won't be as many because they're staying on in Dublin. And then when you come to next term after Christmas, they might only come back twice a term. They they never come back. I'm trying to say stop, to stop and get people, get our politicians, our politicians. And I'm not political. This is not a political, this is not a political announcement. I'm not involved in politics. I'm a member, member of no political party. But our politicians seem to be asleep at the wheel. You would have supported Fianna Fáil in the past. You would have been a big proponent of Martin Cullen because you believe that Martin would have brought a lot as a minister. Damien, I come from a staunch Fine Gael family, yes. but I haven't voted for Fine Gael since 1984 because I didn't agree with the way they did things. Martin Cullen, I was his director of uh, his chairman of his finance yes. committee for, for three elections. And the reason I mention that is you picked people in terms of support on the basis of what they can deliver for a city or a county. <laughs> what they can deliver for the region, not the region. just the city of country. I was in Dublin yesterday. I was going up my gate at eight o'clock and a pal of mine was coming down and he just bipped at me or flashed at me and he left me off. I drove down the quay yesterday morning at five past eight. I was back in town yesterday at a quarter to two, having been at a meeting in Dublin. And I was in town for my lunch at a quarter to two. Now, if that was pre the motorway, you'd be lucky to get home at five o'clock yesterday evening. Elaine, you can see where we're coming from on this. Oh, I totally can. And that message. Yeah. And you're right about the message. Mm. Both of you are right. And it's this idea of, is it positivity? Is it negativity? Is it the reality that we have to talk about? So the reality must, in my opinion, combine all those different elements. I totally agree. And look, I look back on the history of Waterford and I'm no way political, never been involved in any party. I don't come from a political family. But any time we have got ministers, it's made a huge difference and counties that have that big representation do better. So there's an onus on people to be very careful about who they put forward and to think about the city and to actually get off their backside and vote. So many people don't even bother voting. Our turnouts are terrible. So it's hard to argue with all of that, like we all need to do. But just like we have a call to action for our policy, politicians for our people. We also need outside money. We need private investment in our city. And private investment will only come in a city where the city believe in themselves. If I was selling a car in the morning, I'm not going to point out to a potential you know, buyer all the problems with the engine and the windscreen, blah, blah, blah. And just the same way I feel with the city, sometimes there can be a little bit too much of a focus on the negative and that we need to talk it up. And I think you're right, Damien, it is. How do we combine the both? How do we make people aware of the brilliance that's happening out there? What do you think of what Elaine is saying? there Tom I, 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 look Elaine would be we could be a, a penalty without a goalie as far as I'm concerned with what she's saying but what I'm trying to say to is over the years we've been chipped away it's all polit- it's, not, it's been political politicians they haven't been based on reality I mean you just think of the VEC one for example the uh, TEW the headquarters of that is in Wexford. They have one school in Wexford. I think there's five or six in the county. And it, this is all just political expediency. But none of our politicians said, what's happening here? 
And, and this is my point. Like, I, I, I have been in, to the fore in many things in this city over the years. And, like, I'm now looking at it, as I said, I'm not involved. Like, five years ago or six, six years ago, I wouldn't even have had the time to be here. But as I said, my family are now running my business. And, and, and thank God for that. But I'm thinking more from a com- community perspective, from our children's children and all the wonderful people. I mean, I've got, as I said, the best part of 50 people working. They, some of those guys have kids going to, into college this A lot year. of mortgages, yeah. Yeah. And, like, what we want are better jobs. Now, I'll just tell you this. Across the road from me about uh, 15 years ago, when the Department of Lands was moved down here, there was a a lovely man moved in across the road. And he said to me uh, one evening, I was picking stuff up on the footpath, and he was doing the same at the other side, and we were just talking. He said, I think I've died at times and gone to heaven. Because he said, I have a boat in Dunmore East. I'm a work, I can actually walk to work. I have, I'm a member of a golf club. Stuff that I could never even think of in Dublin. Now, we should be selling that because this is a wonderful place to live, to work, rest and play. You know, you can, you can be at the beach and it was a, quite a good summer. My grandchildren were swimming in the Gillimine every day. But like, I am just trying to create the awareness, like the money about the hospital, the money about WIT <coughs> that didn't come in. So do you think, again, I'll come to you in a second, Elaine. We've had an email in from Eddie Mulligan, for example. He's written to Commissioner Harris about the uh, proposed move and other politicians have as well regarding the Garda headquarters. Do you think our politicians are underrepresenting us, Tom? Yes. Yes. Absolutely, yes. I mean, Mr. Halligan is, is a, a junior minister and I, I haven't heard any... Like, we had a situation a year and a half ago where I was asked by the Chamber of Commerce would I go to a meeting in Dublin. This is about the Borough Boundary Extension. And uh, uh, the, 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 one of the TDs in the city wasn't a favour of it. And what about Sinn Féin? I prefer not to go there because I'm 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 I I I find it very hard to speak about uh, any political organisation that refused to condemn the murder of a Garda sergeant in the in the in the doing of his daily work. And what about Fianna Fáil? Uh, I would have to say I'm apolitical, but I would have to say now, and I put my hand up and say that. Uh, a Fianna Fáil government or a Fianna Fáil minister or junior minister in this area couldn't do worse than is happening at the moment. And what about Fine Gael? Uh, I, I like Paddy Coffey. He's a decent guy. He's a good guy. He's a decent guy. And I sent him a note when he won his law case. He's a decent guy. And I mean, he stood up to John Paul Phelan in Kilkenny. And when you have John Paul Phelan, McGuinness and uh, Big Phil Hogan in Kilkenny, and they would crucify Waterford if they could. And Senator, Senator Paddy Coffey is a senator. He's not a TD. Yes. We have a Fine Gael TD. Yeah. Uh, he's retired and he's had shown very, he had no interest in, he, he, like, I mean, he spent the last couple of years in America. He would say that he's been here, he's done a lot of work behind the well, scenes. I don't know, I knew his dad well and, and his dad was one of those that was credited with keeping the hospital here in 1985. That's true. And, and uh, you know, I would give, I, look, I just said to you, I, I'm apolitical, but I can tell you this, if I were, and I'm not going to be, I'm nearly 70 years of age, if I were a TD, I would know what was going on and I would know and I'd be, I'd be shouting from the rooftops. You could still run for election now, and, um, you know, Pence is, and like there's lads running, uh, we'll, we'll be <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> Elaine, what Tom meant mentions there about uh, politics and the connection of politics and representation, in other words, the state, with private enterprise. Is there a symbiotic relationship there? Look, I think there is. And, you know, when you were asking uh, Tom there about the political parties, I was hoping you wouldn't do the same to me because I wouldn't have an opinion on them individually. I have kind of ignored that and I've just jumped in and said, I'm one person. What sector do I know? I know tech. I know it inside out. 20 years in it. What can I do to make a difference? So I've set up a not for profit and without a single red cent from the IDA or EI to date, we've managed to create a huge awareness. We've worked together, companies that are in um, com- competition with each other are coming out and working together and making a difference. People in Dublin, Limerick, Galway contact me on a daily basis. They've heard about us. We've put us on the map. So in a way, I don't sit around waiting for the politicians. It's not a world I know anything about. So what I'm doing a call out to people is if you know your sector and you want to make a difference, get off your backside and do something. We see engineers doing it now. They've set up Engineer the Southeast, a cluster that's going to be like Crystal Valley Tech. There's an insurance accelerator up in Carlow. There's lots of stuff happening. 
And um, I'm reminded of a Dr. Rowe analogy. He does this thing where he talks about growing a bamboo tree. You plant seeds and nothing happens for seven years. And then in year seven, you get something like 70 feet growth in 70 days. And this reminds me of all the stuff that is happening out there that the average listener may not be aware of. There's huge advancements across the world at pharma, fintech. Um, and all of that will come to fruition. So while I absolutely agree with everything Tom is saying, and it kills me, like one of my own family members has a pacemaker, believe me, this is very close to my own family. So like I'm well aware of all the negatives, but I just feel like the bit that I can do is focusing on the positive and the changes I can make. And that is so important. And Tom's not denying that. Yeah. He's saying that is part and parcel. And it's that message for, for example, the Waterford News and Star, the papers, the papers in Dungarvan today, they're all trying to get the positive message, message out. And yet, the Phoenix article in the News and Star every week would talk about what's needed. And some people would give out about it, Lane. I can see you. I, I know it would <laughs> frustrate you because you think, is that negativity bringing the tone down? Uh, Damien, sorry, can I just come in there for a sec? When I was researching... But loads of people would say that that's so important. But Damien, the, the, the private sector and as you rightly said, are doing their bit. But when you look at the public monies that we should be getting our fair share of, we are not. We are not getting our fair share. This has not been negative. I mean, I I sent this letter to you the other day and I wrote to all of the TDs and I wrote to all of the councillors. And one of the councillors replied to me. But I, I, I just feel that nobody shouted stop at all of the five or six or seven major employers. <coughs> now, the knock, <coughs> excuse me, the knock-on effect there is those people have good jobs. You take the Gardaí, it's a good job. They're, 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 they're the, they're our peacekeepers, they're the people who are looked up to in the community. Their children will be part of the community. They go to school, they go to college, they build houses here, they get married here. If you look at the gap, I've only one daughter. She's a lawyer by profession and she's in New York, my only daughter. She left here in 2000 and whatever it was, 2012 or 13, because she couldn't get a job. And, you know, we have, we have, and if you look at it, if you want to be really blunt, I would say that we have one of the highest percentages of lower paid jobs in the country. And the recent figures I understand from different services that have done would indicate ourselves in the border region would be like that. But again, there will be other research that would show that there is a growth and that positivity is developing. This is a debate which is really got the people talking because we've got people ringing and texting in. James calls in to say he doesn't think Waterford's problems are worse than any other city or county apart from maybe Dublin. The same thing is happening in Kilkenny. Taxi driver is rung in to say another thing gone from Waterford is the granting of over 300 taxi licences and inspector. You have to go to Kilkenny now to get that done. Kieran says Tom Murphy is right. It's hard to argue with anything you're saying but what good is it talking about this if we're bringing things down and preaching to convert it. Others are saying focus on the positive as Elaine is doing. That's 100% right. Elaine, you're right on this. Others are saying Tom is right. He's bang on the nail. Others are saying Tom's list is accurate and frightening. It represents, in my opinion, asset streaming from su- successive governments. That's from Joe Kelly. Damien, why are we discussing this? Why talk about the past? Why talk about negativity? Tom shouldn't be raising these issues. Others are saying that you should be raising them. Elaine. I did pull a face about the Phoenix there. And the reason I did that, Damien, is because what drives me nuts is people say, oh, the IDA have underperformed. They haven't brought enough jobs to the region. And people forget, like when IDA co- comes, they come here, they choose where they buy. It's like you, if you love Tremor and you want to live out there, no matter how many houses I show you on the Dunmore Road, you won't be convinced. And that's the same way with the IDA visits. They come over here and they're favourably predisposed to certain areas versus others. So it's not always the IDA's job to do that. You know, so just sometimes it frustrates me. And when we do have an IDA visit. It usually lasts two days and guess what? They usually stay in local hotels and they usually read the News and Star and the Munster and they listen to local radio. These are intelligent people who do their homework about investing in a region. So, you know, it drives me nuts when they say all this negativity in the paper. No, no, so, see, we've got to, you see... No, that's my opinion. No, I know it, your IDA visits opinion, inside out. But I have. Martin Luther King once said, the day we remain silent about things that matter is the day we begin to die. And the the reality is, and you talk about the IDA, my understanding is since 2016, other than there is what used to be the old Woodlock convent in Portlaw, other than whatever jobs were created there, 
there has been no IDA jobs here since 2016. There was 100 jobs announced in July for ASG Allstate Sales Group and they credited Crystal Valley Tech with one of the reasons yeah, well, they Well, congratulations here. and well done. As I said to you, I, I'm, not, I'm trying to... Sp- if, if people can't listen to the facts, I'm only stating the facts. Nobody wants to look forward more than I do. No, Tom, but I'm making the point that in a world of digital footprints and social media and Googling, it's not, you know sometimes there is a downside to putting too much negativity out there because you've got to realise who the audience is. And if I'm a CEO over from Atlanta and I'm picking up a paper and the own, the, our own business people don't believe in the city. Why the hell no, would sorry, I come here? No, sorry, you got this wrong. It's not no, no, I haven't got it wrong. No, I'm just giving an opposing I'm sorry, I'm just it's not confidence in the city. Like, I've put my money where my mouth is. You have? We, we have one of the most best equipped dealerships in the country that cost 15 million euros to put there and I'm still paying for it. But because I believe in the city, I believe in this region, all belong to me. I'm from Dunhill where I go back three or four generations. But somebody has got to say stop. What I'm saying is stop. I'm not talking, any, I'm only telling the people who are out there what has happened. I'm trying to stop now to get people to stand up and stop the uh, the, the, move, the removal or the ex- uh, removal of, of the uh, Garda headquarters. And also, uh, when we didn't uh, uh, touch on it, WIT. There's talk about that going to where the Kilkenny or Carlo. We've got to say stop. Rose has phoned in to say, well done to Tom and Elaine. If our TDs <laughs> were half as good as them, we'd have a great city. Another person is saying, it's easy for Tom to talk positive. The vast amount of people in Ireland are struggling. There's no spending power. That's from Joe. Fair play to Tom Murphy. He's great. He has the balls to speak out. Tom Murphy, says Councillor McGuinness, Sinn Féin councillor, says, no, you're wrong. His points are valid. But as a former fundraiser for Fianna Fáil, he has to take stock of his own role in supporting politicians that has divested from Waterford. So the political thing Connor is raising there. Another texter, look, of course, there are positive things happening, but we can't ignore the fact that Waterford is being deliberately neglected and the fact sabotaged by some useless TDs not doing their jobs. Yeah, look... I don't want to get personal. I'm in business. And as I said, I am trying to be positive. I, like, I'm part of uh, a group. We had a meeting this week with the, with the uh, uh, politicians in relation to the upcoming budget and the CO2 emissions, which, again, politically, there, it's kind of the right thing to do. And the, the, the lack of information that's coming out in relation to, you know, the environment and all the rest of it and the alternatives, like we're, the, the politicians across all parties don't know what they're talking about. You know, Lane. Um, I'm on this radio for one reason. I want more people to follow me on Crystal Valley Tech on LinkedIn and social media because I've seen the power of what I can do without a penny in my organisation. Great support from the EI and IDA in terms of Brenda McDonnell and Brian Fives. They've been brilliant with supports, introductions and all the rest. But you know what? If only one thing comes out of a, a, a chat like this is that people do more positive stuff. And I do agree with Tom. I think he is absolutely nailed a lot of the points there. But in a world where negative news gets so much more uh, headline than positive, you know, I have to dwell on the positives and that's what we're all about. People will come and invest here because we have a growing, vibrant city that our own business leaders believe in. I'm trying to, not to cut across you, what I'm trying to do is to stop, to stop the Gardaí moving headquarters. What I'm trying to do is to get people to react and try to get the headquarters of WIT remain in Waterford. And what we have done on this programme and consistently do it and Billy did it and Amy did it is that we will report on the good news on the jobs and we will also discuss how to make things better and that's what we're doing here this morning and I know that's why you're here this morning to discuss Absolutely, how to make Damien, things better great support. and that's the message within that Lisa says well done to all involved in Crystal Valley Tech and also uh, more texts coming in to say well done to you Tom to raise this issue and on your call to stop the hemorrhaging hem- isn't that what you're saying? Yes. Elaine Thank you so much, Crystal Valley Tech. Follow you online, LinkedIn, the whole lot. Thanks a million, Damien. Tom Thank Murphy, you, Tom. follow you out to the Cork Road. Yeah. And listen, the two of you go out for a chat outside now. And si- you and, be selling me a car. And right the, right the wrongs of the world, will you? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Daisha Today with Damien Tiernan on WLR. Thanks to Mulligan's. Blue Club Rewards from Mulligan'sPharmacy.com. Spend a little to earn a lot.